hey guys and welcome to today's video so today's video is going to be my birthday perfume haul i do like to spoil myself in the month of march some of these i would say i got in february and march some are gifts from family members and then i do have one pr that just happened to come in the month of march and i'll go over all of that i'm not gonna go into too many details because there's a lot of fragrances i'll just go over them briefly hey guys editing becky here so i have decided to split this video up into two parts it just got way too long i missed two fragrances i got a few more coming in the mail so this is part one and stay tuned for part two and then i will link any reviews that i have on these below because i've already reviewed a few of them and then there are more reviews coming so let's go ahead and get into the video all right so first up i'm gonna go over these body mists really quick skylar was having a sale i think it was either 15 or 20 percent off and then these were bundled and the bundle was already kind of like discounted and these are all nice light and airy fragrances and i plan on using these for hair and for layering reasons but we'll start with my favorite peach fields because it's like just the most prettiest musky clean shampooy peach scent yeah so this has notes of white peach osmanthus and sandalwood then we have vanilla sky and this has notes of cappuccino pure vanilla and caramelized cedar now this one i thought was going to be super decadent but it's just a light simple vanilla perfect for just spraying on your hair if you want something light and not too loud for bed or you want a base for layering. Then we have Coconut Cove. This has bergamot, coconut, and ambrox. This is again simple, perfect for layering. Now I will say this one, the coconut in here does smell a little bit more synthetic, but this is your kind of beachy, slightly suntanny coconut scent. All of these are again, very, very light. Boardwalk Delight, I thought that the cotton candy and the coconut milk was gonna be too much, but it's when you think of like cotton candy, very airy, fluffy, but a little sugary sweet. That's what you get in Boardwalk Delight. Okay, the next I have some fragrances from Ellis Brooklyn. So we'll start with Sunfruit. So Sunfruit, this is a soft, fruity, kind of musky scent. It's got pear, there's fig in here, there's coconut. It's funny because even though there's coconut and then fig that sometimes comes off coconutty to my nose, the coconut and fig combination almost makes it seem like it's coconut water and sandalwood like this doesn't come off creamy like like tonic like when you think of some coconut milk fragrances the coconut in here isn't creamy but there's a creaminess that i get from sandalwood but i don't see sandalwood listed so i don't know if it's like they're just not listing it or if it's a combination of the notes it reminds me of Leda's 22 Auris and Leda's 22 Auris and Sunfruit to me smell like flankers of each other. Almost like you took Sunfruit and then made a deeper like elixir version. That's what Leda is to me. It's got a little bit more going on. It's textural. I know that sounds kind of weird, but there's a creaminess, like a butteriness to that one. It's gourmand, but at the same time, it's also clean and fresh. So it's a little too busy for me. This is the lighter, airier, fresher version, but I did want to mention because they are compared a lot and I do smell the similarities. I would just say that latest 22 Auris is for someone, like that one I enjoy in cooler weather. I cannot wear that in the Florida heat. It's too much for me. This one I can. I will, I will say that the Ellis Brooklyn line is more intimate. It is more in your bubble. I get them to last but they're definitely not projection monsters. So that is Sunfruit. Then Rose, this is a really beautiful kind of clean, musky rose scent. You get the peony in here. It's similar to Armani's from the Privé collection, the Pivon Sujo, like those clean, pink, rosy fragrances. There is something slightly sharp in the opening, but when it settles, it settles to more of a after the shower rosy peony kind of clean scent without being shampooy it's almost like a beautiful spa fragrance it just smells luxurious clean not like some of the other clean musky rose fragrances that i have for every day 
This one smells a little bit more elevated and expensive. So Ellis Brooklyn Rose, if you're really into rose, I would say get a sample of this. That's what I did. I sampled Ellis Brooklyn first. So Fawn, to me, this one reminds me of Tom Ford's Soleil Blanc, the one in the frosty kind of clear glass. That's the one that I had gotten a sample of and Dossier's version. This fragrance reminds me of when I've described those fragrances that they smell like an expensive suntan lotion. It's just got this creamy coconut. It's got this slight but not overdone suntanny vibe. It's very soft. It's not too much or too heavy. Now, surprisingly, there is no jasmine listed, but I get a clean jasmine in this scent. I believe it's Magnolia and Lily of the Valley, which I don't really get those. The florals in here are very blended, but I get a very clean jasmine in the dry down. Yeah. This is a very put together woman wearing an all white bathing suit on a yacht or on a ship or on a cruise ship and she just smells expensive and she has her expensive suntan lotion and the coconut milk in here is not lectonic. It's again more of a watery coconut. It's if you've ever had coconut, it's the water, not the actual flesh of the coconut. It's not overly lectonic. This one's really nice. I can't wait to wear this one in summer. So again, that's Ellis Brooklyn's Fawn. So next we have Kayali's Smoky Oud. This was sent to me. This fragrance has rum, saffron, geranium, cedarwood, patchouli, and oud. Even though it's not rose, the geranium is coming off very rosy in this scent. Yeah, you get the rum in the opening, the saffron, and then when this dries down, I get a musky, woody, slightly oudy rose scent. It's not my favorite from the line, but I do enjoy it in the dry down. I do not like the rum that is in the opening. But if you want more details on this fragrance, check out my review below. I wanted to feature it here because I know a lot of people watch my haul videos. So again, that is Smoky Oud by Kayali. All right, then next we have Narciso Rodriguez For Her Forever. This bottle is just so beautiful. So this fragrance smells like the original Narciso Rodriguez for her, the Eau de Toilette, the one in the black bottle, which was my wedding day scent. I don't remember what yellow florals or what it is, but people said this is the more tropical version. And I'm not getting that just yet. I will say that I have to play with this one a little bit more. I didn't spend as much time with this one because when I wore it, I'm like, this smells like the original. There is something different. But here is what did happen. When I wore this fragrance, I was transported back to my wedding, like, you know, sense memory, more so than my most recent bottle. Like, I don't know about reformulation because I always see it and read about it from fragrance lovers, but I've never heard about it from companies or from like the perfume industry, just the community. So I don't know about reformulation. But when I got married in 2011, I do remember the scent being just a little bit more complex. Like I remember when I sprayed it for like my friends, some loved it, some hated it. Like it wasn't for everyone. And Narcisa Rodriguez isn't for everyone. But I do feel like this new one almost reminded me of the 2011 version that I wore than the most recent bottle that I re-added probably three years ago because I've gone through several bottles of the other toilet already so I'm gonna play with it a little bit more see if I get more of the tropical florals but this is a musky musky because we all know that Narciso Rodriguez the house itself is known for its musk it's a signature musk yeah a signature musk with some florals again I'm not getting the yellow florals yet and it's musky and woody. It has a thing. And this smells just like the original Eau de Toilette, but more so the older formulation. So again, I don't know about reformulation, but I will report back on this one to let you guys know if I start picking up on the other notes. Next we have Fame by Paco Roban, and this is the new Parfum version, not to be confused with the original, because the 30 mils all come in this clear bottle. Now I am going to be getting the new Intense, 
and I think I'm gonna put a star to remember because they all look the same in this 30 mil. I wouldn't even mind bedazzling the different um, glasses, but in my Are They Fool bottle were the one of my first of the year. I said that I wish I would have skipped on this one and went straight for the Intense. And that's because this one and the original are similar. Yeah. Oh my God. I love Paco Roban's fame. I tested out a travel first. Well, I tested it out at Macy's. Me and Dennis enjoyed it right away. And then I got the travel first and I knew I wanted a bottle. But the Parfum version is what a lot of people wish the original was because this one is louder and this one is more in your face and it's deeper. But I find the original to perform. But it's a little more clean. Like I think there's, I believe there's Jasmine in that one and I get it a little bit more. So in the Florida heat, it's just the right amount of loud. This is summer nights. This might be too loud for me during the day. This is the original just with a little more oomph. So I can see why people would have just skipped to this, but I want to play with it a little bit more. But I tested them side by side and I did enjoy the opening of this one more, but in the dry down, I preferred the original. I just liked that it was more, more airy, light and clean and the mango was more fruity. And here the mango is more like maybe mango syrup. And I don't wanna say syrup because I don't want you guys to think it's syrupy. It's just more of an ambery scent. So mixed in the mango is just a little bit deeper, whereas it's more fruity and light in the original, in my opinion. So again, that is Fame, the Parfum version by Paco Roban. Next we have Carolina Herrera's Good Girl Blush Elixir and this is a flanker to a flanker. I got the original Good Girl Blush and it was very reminiscent of Mont Blanc Signature. So Mont Blanc Signature has orange and then vanilla and it gives it this kind of, I don't know, creamy. A lot of people said like orange sorbet or like a orange creamsicle but to me it was almost like a milk bath but with like orange slices on top of it if you want to be super fancy that's Mont Blanc signature and I still got that in good girl blush because people were comparing that scent and I remember when I tested it I'm like I have this but I couldn't put my finger on it and I went to Fragantica and it reminded me even though the notes aren't similar in any way they smelled a lot alike this one I still get that I still get that orange that I get in Mont Blanc that I get in, it's like, um, it is a little orange creamsicle, but I don't know. I guess in Mont Blanc, it just smelled more spa-like. This is definitely the elixir. This is a little deeper, a little more sexy. I'm still on the fence with, with it, but I, I don't know. I, I go back and forth. Well, let me give you the notes because to me, the notes... They don't go. I mean, some of the notes go, but I, I do get orange in both of them, even though they don't list orange. Oh, well, this one does have mandarin orange. The original doesn't show it, but this one shows bergamot, which the original blush has. It has mandarin orange. This one has ylang, which I think is giving it a little bit more depth. It has rose, patchouli. That's definitely adding to the scent and vanilla. It smells a lot like blush. This is a flanker to a flanker. Very good girl and very good girl glam. That's a flanker to a flanker. But in any case, I'm gonna be going over this and all of the shoes in a video. That's definitely coming. I've always wanted to do that because I do enjoy the shoes. So I'll go over this one in more detail, but I did pick up a 30 mil of this one. And again, that is Carolina Herrera's Good Girl Blush Elixir. And that is my Spanglish way of saying it. I know someone recently corrected me and said it's Carolina Herrera, but I'm Spanglish. I speak both English and Spanish, so you got a little bit of both. All right, then next we have La Via Belle Rose Extraordinaire. I've always loved La Via Belle. I know that that's a infamous, a very hated on fragrance in the fragrance community, but I've always loved it. It's, not, it's a number one seller for a reason, but I'm loving the flinkers more. I have moved past it. It's a scent that now I, my mom wears it, family members of mine wear it. So I, I have a travel and I'm probably just gonna keep the little 15 mil travel and then just enjoy the flankers. I'm loving the flankers of the fragrances. Yeah, 
This one's more sparkly, rosy. I will say that this does remind me of their limited edition one. I'm going to compare them. I'm going to follow this video up because I want to compare them and I want to do a video with the Lancome Livia Bells that I've tried, which I've tried quite a few. But there is one, and I think it's Domain. It was La Via Belle Domain de la Rose. That one. I feel like this smells very similar to that one. Almost like in between Domain de la Rose and En Rose, which are two of my favorite. So I do like this flanker, and the bottle is just gorgeous. Look at it. I did finally find the Lex Straight in a 30 mil. I wasn't gonna get that one until I saw Coco talk about it and now I wanna get it. So that one is on the way. It's not gonna make it into this video, but I do want to talk about this one a little bit more after I've played with them, but it to me it's in between. It's a kind of, it's the La Via Bell DNA, but it's more rosy and I don't wanna say jammy. To me, the En Rose is a little more jammy. And then Domaine de la Rose is a little bit more of a sexy, intoxicating rose. This is in the middle of them. Maybe leaning a little jammy sweet and a little intoxicating, a little in between the two. This one's really pretty. I do like this one. I think this is gonna be another favorite. Yeah, guys, that is my birthday perfume haul. Let me know in the comments below did you guys pick up any of these that were your favorite? Or is there a fragrance that you picked up recently that is your favorite? Let's talk about it in the comments. I wouldn't mind having some other ideas. But that will do it for today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.